Hey, what's good, y'all? This is Marshall Fox with a quick Wix tip. Wow, I'll say that 10 times fast. Uh, so let me share my screen. So I showed this little parallax guy a couple weeks ago. Got a lot of great responses, a couple questions. So I just wanted to show you exactly how I do it. So long story short, this is the original photo, right? It's just different layers. I took this photo and I got rid of CJ like this. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I got rid of him. And then I also cropped him out like this. So I'll show you exactly how to do that. So it's just it's just a few layers. So I'm actually doing this for another client right now. And just to illustrate what I mean, as you can see, the background is it moves a little bit and then he's in one position and it looks even better when it's scaled down I'm on a 5k monitor so it's huge but most browsers when people visit it it'll look something like this of course it only works on on a desktop for now at least on the regular editor I'm not sure about the I'm sure about editor X just yet so this is how it looks. So I'm actually doing this for another another client. So I wanted to show you exactly how I do it. So step one, let me open up Photoshop. So this is the photo and this is, this is gonna be really easy to do. So it'll be perfect to illustrate it. So there are a couple different ways. So what do we have to do? We have to have the blank background without him standing in front of it. Then we have to crop him out as well. So it's a couple different steps. So what I'll do first is, so there are a couple ways I can just select him like this with, this is the lasso tool in Photoshop. This is one way. And I'm going to do a content aware fill. So it's basically going to fill this by the other content that it, it wants to be aware of, I guess. So I'll go to image or is it edit? Yeah, edit and then content aware fill. It'll kind of analyze it and fill it in quickly. And as you can see on the right hand side, it got rid of him. So it analyzes what's in the green. It analyzes the content that's in the green and then it kind of fills it in based off of that. So that's one way. So I'll hit cancel. This is another way. And this is the way that I did it with CJ's before I guess this content aware fill came out or before I was aware of it. So I'll go to select, deselect, and then zoom in and I'll go to the clone stamp tool. So all this does is it will stamp clones <laughs> of certain areas. So I'll hit option to select a sample point. So I want to sample this white area. So I'll hit option and then I'll move it over to his shirt and I'll kind of paint, paint him out. So I'll have to do it again. So you get where I'm going here, right? Then it starts to paint him again over here. So you just hit option, I hit option on the other side just hit option to keep sampling. So I do that. So that's a quick way. And down here, what I would do, and of course your photo will be different is I'll kind of drag over like this. I'll sample this straight section, drag over, make sure it lines up and just let me zoom in. So sample this area, for example, drag it over like this. Just keep painting. And then this area is the same. So that's how I would do that. But let me go back to, and of course you can paint um, just to make sure it's smooth, but it doesn't have to be perfect in the middle because it, this part is going to be behind him when I add it to the website. So let me just go back and do the content aware fill this all right so I'll do the content aware fill 
So edit, content aware fill, it'll analyze it. So you'll see on this right hand side, see, it just gets rid of them. Okay. It's loading it up. Boom. And then I'll go ahead and just save it. And I'll save it as like a JPEG because the background doesn't need to be crisp at all. So I'll make it maybe, let's say a thousand pixels wide. That's good enough. So what I typically do, I know people have questions about this, is I will save it first. Let me see, parallax background. And I'll just make sure it looks good. And then I'll go back in and um, I'll use an app like Squoosh. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Squoosh, but I like to use Squoosh. S-Q-U-O-O-S-H dot app. And I'll add the photo here. So I'll just show you what it looks like. So this is to optimize photos for, for websites to make it as small as possible. So I add the photo and then I can compress it. So this is 75% on the left hand side is the original on the right hand side is the compressed image. So you can kind of tweak it as needed and see how much quality you're willing to give up <laughs> to, to get that file size down. So as of right now, that looks good. So it's right now it's 97% small. If I was to download it looking like this at 75%. So I'll save this P bright background. Let's just say two. Um, so now I have I have another step, right? I have to crop him out. So there are a couple different ways to do that. So I'll go file, I'll just save as the background. PG. So open this back up. So there are a few ways to do that. Uh, I won't really get into that because this is a Wix group, not a Photoshop group, right? But you do use a quick selection tool. And I would recommend learning Photoshop or other design programs just get a base understanding of it because it'll allow you to be a lot more flexible with your designs on Wix which will allow you to charge more which is always fun so do it that way um, select your subject select a mask so then you can refine the mask so that's one way select and deselect you can do it let let the AI do it by coming over here to properties and then let me see quick actions on the properties and do remove background may not be perfect but let's see what it does yeah, it did a great job so you can do that and then just save it file save as a uh, PNG of course compress it but one of the the best ways that I like to do this is I use a program called remove.bg let's see how this does You can also use Fiverr. I've done that before. Somebody on Fiverr, like send them a few photos you want the backgrounds removed from and they'll send it back and it'll look great. And that looks good as well. So I use, I use this, so I'll download this. And this works great. This works great. Okay, so I'll save that. So now I'll open this up in like um, Affinity Designer. See, I used it for this photo, but I just want to get rid of all the excess empty space. Where did I save? Oh, here it is. 
And what I likely do, at least in this case, is um, light him up a bit. It's because the, the shadows are kind of harsh. So let me see. Levels. Black level is good. White level. And I'm not like an expert by any means when it comes to photo manipulation and things of that nature, but I, I tinker around. It's always good to tinker to see what works. If you were to ask me, Marshall, what does levels mean? What is a levels adjustment? I couldn't tell you. I just know I open it up and I play with the sliders <laughs> and I tweak it until it looks good. So that looks good to me. Size it down a bit. Copy. Oh paste it to a new clipboard so I can save it looks like I'm missing some adjustments all right so I'll do file export so this program is called affinity designer it's, it's similar to Photoshop I use use them all a bit here and there um, so I do in cropped to so now the fun begins so I'll come back so this is his site so far and I work with speakers authors coaches and consultants so the bulk of what I do um, you know follows a, a similar formula so you'll see the original template is this one this is the original one I think it's a newer one so this is the one I'm tweaking. It won't really look anything like this once I'm done with it. That's the point, right? But yeah, just full disclosure, that's the template I'm working from. And I really just started a couple hours ago. So this is where we are so far. So I wanna change this section. So the key is to have a strip with at least one column. So this is a two column strip because you can change the column background. That's key to having the parallax. The parallax. So I'll change this column background. Image. Upload. So I do that. That background that we got. Right here. One that's 13 kilobytes. So then I'll go parallax and I'll show you a trick because we may run, run into a bit of an issue, but I'll show you a trick. So now we have that and I want to add his photo. So I'll go here. Should have added them both at the same time, but okay. So you can see photos and crop too. So now we have him here. And what I likely do is crop him because we don't need all his legs and everything. So do like this, make it larger. And that's pretty much it. So now if I hit preview, you'll see we have the parallax. And that's it, you can animate him in there like I did with CJ. I believe he kind of slides in from the left-hand side. He slides in, right? So you can animate it like that if you want. Which I'm likely not gonna do. But let's, let's say this was zoomed in too much. You know, I don't want to get too far in the weeds, but let's say this the, the background, because you know with parallax, it zooms in on the background in order to get that parallax effect. 
So let's say it was it was zoomed in too much. I would just have to extend the photo. So really quickly. I would increase the size of the canvas. Let's make it like 2,500 pixels wide. So you see this, the canvas is now extended and I would continue to um, paint using the parallax or the content aware, I'm uh, not parallax, the, the um, clone stamp tool or a content aware fill. So like this, just like I showed you before, just make it just extend it out. I like that. So you get the point, right? I probably would just get rid of that mic stand altogether to make it less complicated, but yeah, just extend it out. I think I did that here. Let me check another site. I could be wrong. I think I am wrong. Yeah, I switched hers up. Hers is a bit different than I originally did it. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's how you achieve that effect. It's it's really simple once you know how to do it. And I think it looks cool. And you know, you can't really tell that you know he was removed from the actual photo. It just adds a bit of depth. I think it's nice. So what I'll likely do, I have to go back in. It looks like we didn't get rid of that that uh that space between his his fingers, as you'll see. So I'll I'll probably go in. I'm gonna do that now, but I'll go in and fix that. But yeah, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, hope you guys have a great day. And yeah, just wanted to to share that with you guys. All right, peace.